Well, hey, good morning. Uh, just a little bit uh, late today. Um, so there's a little bit of chaos at my house this morning. So I got all the kids to school and everybody is where they need to be. And so I'm here at the office. I figured I'd give you a view uh, from my desk. And so uh, it is good to be with you. I'm Lou, one of the pastors here. And we're in our uh, Lenten series uh, on the book, uh, God on Mute. And so I posted in the comments um, uh, a link to Amazon to purchase this book uh, by Pete Gregg. He has fantastic books. I encourage you to check out any of them. Uh, Red Moon Rising is one of my favorites. But this book, uh, he's just redone, and he's added a 40-day devotional in the back. And so that's what we're going through as we walk through this season of Lent. And so today is our 24th day. Uh, can you believe it? We're 24 days into this 40-day season of Lent. And so uh, we're thankful to be together, be able to do this um, Saturday uh, or Monday through Saturday um, and then go through this series. And so hopefully it's been helpful for you. Hopefully, hopefully you've found uh, some hope. Uh, hopefully it's been reflective. And so if you haven't uh, tuned in before, the, um, the devotional goes this way. It uses the acronym PRAY. And so it breaks down this way, that uh, each day we're to pause, that we're to stop, uh, step out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. We're, we're going to pause our day. And we're going to start this process uh, of our reflection. So we're going to reflect on um, what God is doing. We're going to reflect on uh, maybe uh, some scripture. We're going to reflect on uh, our, our day yesterday and what we uh, think today will be like as we begin to reflect. And then we're going to ask. We're going to ask some questions. Ask some questions of ourselves. Um, what did we uh, do yesterday that we wouldn't do today? Uh, what are the things that God is calling us to? We feel like God is speaking into our lives. And then ask God the question, God, what are you showing me today? Okay, so we're going to pause. We're going to reflect. We're going to ask the question. And then finally, the whole point of this series is yielding to God's will. And so we're following this series, which goes through Holy Week. Jesus' experience of preparing for the cross, of, uh, of him uh, pausing, reflecting, uh, uh, being in deep prayer, uh, asking God questions, uh, but ultimately yielding his will to God's. And so, uh, so that's how it breaks down. So today is an interesting one. Uh, the title is This Means War, right? Uh, and so uh, that's not an unfamiliar uh, phrase for I'm sure many of us. But he talks today about this idea of what do we do when we get angry, when we have uh, angst, when things around us seem unsettled, uh, like there's just anger brewing, uh, not only in our own lives, but in relationships and in the world around us. And so uh, he, he lists up this verse, Psalm 5, uh, 25, 1 through 2, and we're going to start with this. It says, uh, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. I'll read it again. Uh, in you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you, and do not let me be put to shame. And he lifts up this idea that we don't, uh, sometimes we feel like we just struggle against like flesh and blood, right? The, the humanness of the world. And, but we forget that there's a, a spiritual warfare going on all around us, right? That, um, that uh, not that there's a, a devil behind every bush, but there are uh, things in this world uh, that are beyond just what you and I can control. There are some evil things, evil movements, uh, evil things that happen in the world and they, they bring pain and suffering. And so he, he asks these questions about, you know, what do we do when we experience that as a Christian? What do we do when we experience um, that kind of uh, warfare? We get angry. Um, he says this. He says, we know that the terror and tragedies screaming from today's newspaper cannot possibly reflect the heart of a loving father at, it, uh, at work in his world. He says, we look around us and we can see very clearly that the things happening in this world are distinctly different from the kingdom of God that we know uh, is already here, is still breaking in, and is to come, right? Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom that is coming. And, and so we, we see the gap. Um, uh, uh, N.T. Wright actually talks a lot about this idea that suffering uh, uh, for Christians, suffering in our lives, is the fact that we live in this gap between the present world that's broken and fallen and the coming kingdom. We live in this gap, and so we experience suffering in a different way. Uh, we, we know what the world should be like. We know what God uh, has uh, put into motion in creation. We know what uh, the world reconciled to him looks like as we read scripture. And so we know very clearly that this is not it, right? We may catch glimpses of it, but for the most part, we experience through the news, through the media, through relationships, the brokenness of this world. So he says, what do you do when you get angry about it? And he lifts up these uh, verses out of Ephesians 6, uh, verse 12 and 13. He says this, 
He says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this darkness uh, and this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. It's recognizing that the world around us um, is full of uh, evil, uh, that there are evil things happening in the world. Uh, and when we become aware of those things, it becomes really difficult for us to navigate. And so uh, the author here is saying uh, in Ephesians that, uh, that we need to really be prepared. And we need to put on the full armor of God so that when we do experience that, our anger, our uh, attention, our purpose is pointed in the right direction. Uh, you know, um, he asks this question. He says, uh, do I ever misdirect my anger against the world, against God himself? Do I get angry about what's happening in the world around me, uh, what, what we are doing in creation? Do I get angry at the war and the famine and the oppression, the injustice in the world, and blame it on God? Uh, in this whole book, he's, he's grappling with this idea that uh, his wife is very sick. He's praying desperately. He's, he's trying to find a way uh, for a miracle, for healing, for all these things. And he openly admits that there are seasons he goes through that he blames God. He's angry at God. And so he asks the question, have there been times in your life where you've misdirected anger at God? Or maybe you misdirected at somebody else. You've, you're upset about something, and instead of uh, directing it at that situation, it comes out maybe in friendships, uh, in, in your family, uh, with your uh, significant other or your child. He says, when we misdirect, we're not living into what the kingdom of God is that we know. Instead, we're, um, we're admitting that uh, we're fallen, we're broken, and we're uh, committing to stay in that gap. He says, we shouldn't do that. We should put on the full armor of God and live fully into what God is doing. And so he says, uh, ask yourself that question, and then ask God this question today. God, uh, recognizing the spiritual battle raging on all around me, uh, it doesn't take very long for us to realize that there is a uh, raging battle all around us. Uh, there's war, war in our news. Uh, there's uh, anger and disruption on, on social media. That people are fighting about all kinds of things. Uh, we see images of violence uh, on TV. Uh, we see people lashing out at each other. Uh, and so there's, there's, no, uh, there's no way to hide those things in our world. But he says, recognizing that. He says, God, I put on my helmet of salvation to guard my thinking. He says, I put on the breastplate of righteousness to guard my heart. The shield of faith to deflect enemy attacks the belt of truth to, to guard my sexuality, the shoes of the gospel to make myself ready, and I take up the sword uh, of the Spirit to fight the enemy with the sharpness of God's word. This is the armor of God that Pete Gregg is, he's saying, ask God today to make me very aware of the battles going on around me and help me not to pick up the sword formed in this world, in the broken world, but pick up the sword of truth. Help me guard my mind, my thoughts, help me guard my heart, uh, help me be prepared uh, to share the gospel in even the most difficult situations. And they list this prayer up. And this is a prayer from an uh, uh, eight, uh, 18th century soldier, explorer, monk. Uh, that's an interesting combo, right? A soldier, explorer, monk. Uh, Charles, um, uh, we'll just say Monk Charles. <laughs> he says this, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your uh, creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Amen. And so today, as you go about your day, as uh, you experience uh, some of the pressure of war, some of the pressure of tension, uh, some of the, uh, the anxiety that happens in our world, instead of uh, preparing for battle, uh, in the way that we normally do. Instead of getting ready to fight those around us, instead of lashing out, instead of uh, using harsh words, instead of building those conversations in our hearts and minds where we have, uh, where we say just the right thing to get the dig in, right? Instead of doing those things, Pete Gregg says, choose this day to put on the full armor of God, to protect your thoughts, to protect your heart, um, to be ready to share the good news, but be prepared to defend yourself um, with the Word of God. Be prepared to share the good news uh, in a way that, um, that draws people closer to the kingdom and not to this broken world. And so uh, as Christians, we prepare for war in a different way. 
And so my hope today for you is that uh, whatever battles you face, whatever uh, you've been in uh, in the last, last season, uh, that you are uh, today committing to doing these things, that, uh, that no more will you fall into the trap of anger and anxiety, no longer will you fall into the trap of lashing out, uh, misdirected anger at those around you, um, but that you'll commit to um, deeply leaning into this practice of putting on the full armor of God, protecting your heart and mind, and being ready to share the good news, even in the most difficult situation. And so uh, we're excited for this, uh, this weekend. We have uh, lots going on here. If you are interested in joining us, we have uh, our online and our in-person, our 930, it's our modern service, and 1115 is our traditional uh, here in the sanctuary. We'd love to have you. Again, check out the book. Um, it's an amazing book. If you haven't read it, there's still time to jump in, and we'll be doing this uh, Monday through Saturday here uh, at 7 a.m., uh, except for apparently when I do it, because um, my children know. So uh, have a great day, and uh, blessings to you all, and uh, my hope for you is that you'll experience God's peace today. Have a great day. Bye.